The next photo detector we want to look at um, is a little more sophisticated use of the semiconductor. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, photodiodes and phototransistors are relatively similar. Uh, and the photodiode that detects light and turns it into electricity is very similar to the light emitting diode, which takes electricity and turns it into photons. And so I'll kind of discuss these all uh, together because uh, at the level we're interested in today, uh, it's enough to sort of think about them all being the same physics. So the photoresistor is just a block of semiconducting material. You shine light on it. It makes more electrons free to move around, and that lowers the resistance of the device. The photodiode, or phototransistor, is actually a much more sophisticated device. I'm going to quite have all the physics for it, but it's actually two semiconductors connected. And when we shine light on the interface region, uh, it turns out there's an inherent voltage that's built up across the interface between these two different materials. Uh, and when you now shine light on this material, once again, the electrons in this semiconductor can be popped from a, a, an orbit where they are relatively unfree to move, so it's, it's an insulator. They're popped up into an orbit where now they're high enough uh, an energy that this potential energy, this voltage, can move them. And we don't actually have to apply an external uh, voltage in this case to sweep them out because there's an internal voltage built into the device. So now, when one photon comes in, and again, H nu is the energy of a photon, so we often use that as a symbol, um, it will create, let's say, an electron somewhere near this junction. Um, and that electron will be swept out of the device by the internal electric field. In this case, since electrons are negative, uh, it's going to go that way. And that turns into a current. So a photoresistor transmits its signal to you by a drop in resistance. A photodiode, or phototransistor, gives its signal to you. It tells you how much light there is through current. And the current is going to be proportional to the optical power. Watts, let's say. Uh, because the optical power is proportional to the number of photons. It's fascinating and, and useful to remember that this is a quantum engineering device. Each quanta of light, photon, makes one and only one quanta of electricity, the electron. So if this device was 100% efficient, and they're pretty close to that, they're not too bad, <coughs> then the current out here is made of a number of electrons as a function of time, per unit time, that's equal, about, to the number of photons per unit time that's making it in and doing this reaction. So one, you have to use them differently because they're a current device. Th this sensor gives you a current, not a voltage, not a resistance. So that's a new thing for us. And two, they're much more sensitive than a photoresistor. We can detect very, very small currents, much more so than we can detect small changes in resistance. So that's nice. They're better when you want to sense, sense small amounts of optical power. Um, and conveniently, also, they're much faster. Here, we kick an electron loose with this photon, and it is essentially immediately swept out of this junction region and given to you. And if you design this right, that can be a very, very fast operation. The photoresistor, you have to pour a lot of light in. You have to bring a lot of electrons up into this region, this, this band, this uh, orbit where they can conduct. And now, finally, you can detect that there was a change in resistance. This is a much more one photon to one electron device. It can be orders and orders, like nine or 10 orders of magnitude faster. These are the kinds of devices that you would use in optical communication. You would never use a photoresistor in optical communication unless all you had to say was on or off. One last fun little fact. If you run this device backwards, roughly, you get a light emitting diode. If we shove electricity in here, it goes into this region where there's this, uh, this uh, boundary between the two materials. Uh, the electrons, which are sort of at a high energy because you're driving them in with the, the voltage you're providing, will drop down from their high energy state to the lower energy state where they tend not to move around. 
And when they do that, they will emit a photon. That's, as a matter of fact, how an LED works. So the point is, LEDs have the same characteristics. They're relatively efficient devices. Every electron turns into one photon. Uh, they're relatively fast devices, because all you got to do is get those electrons in there, and out pops uh, the, uh, the photon. So LEDs and devices like them are pretty good choices for the source in a communication network. That's why we're using them in this lab as the light source that will turn on and off.